In 2008, Grant Thornton LLP filed suit against the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency to appeal a decision made by the OCC that required Grant Thornton to pay a $300,000 fine and civil penalties for failure to meet generally accepting auditing standards in its audit of the First National Bank of Keystone. Some facts on the case first. Keystone increased their revenue stream from $100 million to $1 billion in approximately five years. The OCC audits and supervises all national banks, such as Keystone. Due to Keystone's low score rating from the OCC, it was decided that Grant Thornton would be hired as their accounting firm. The OCC and Grant Thornton give conflicting opinions on Keystone's financial records. The OCC finds that Keystone inflated their interest income by $98 million and their assets by $450 million but these assets actually belong to United National Bank of Wheeling, West Virginia. Because Grant Thornton approved the records and missed the falsified information, Keystone was shut down and Grant Thornton was fined $300,000. Now Grant Thornton is trying to appeal the OCC's decision based on their claim that they did not participate or engage in an unsafe or unsound practice in conducting the business or the affairs of the bank in violation of the financial institution's reform Recovery and Enforcement Act. Keystone reported on their mortgage portfolio that CompuLink and Advana had serviced their own accounts were both $227 million and $242 million. However, in reality, they had been serviced for $14 million and $6.3 million. After not receiving a response, Boingner followed up by telephone and fax with CompuLink. Then the Advana manager, Patricia Ramirez, sent Boingner a statement through FedEx stating that Advana, the reporting error, which was a figure less than 138th of the $242 million reported. Several weeks later, through phone calls, Ramirez told Boingner that she located another reporting error, which was owned by an investor numbered with the number 400 and six, or otherwise identified as the United National Bank. Boyner, instead of replying to that statement, told Ramirez that the $242 million was indeed correct. This stood out as the most because it was identified as a maximum risk because they only used a test of reasonableness. They had no effort to verify the accuracy of the figures, which by law is required under their, the generally accepted auditing standards and Grant Thornton LOP owned internal auditing manual. So in conclusion, 98 million worth that Keystone reported on their interest income truly never existed and could have, have been verified. I would like to address Grant Thornton's failure to comply with their company's own auditing manual. The two auditors assigned by Grant Thornton were Stanley Quay and Susan Boyner. They were made aware of some pretty glaring red flags about Keystone before they prepared their audit. They also failed to follow their own auditing manual. Some of the red flags were the fact that Keystone experienced a sudden rapid growth in assets and profitability. Keystone also had a history of filing inaccurate call reports. Michael Graham, Vice President of Keystone Management Company, was also found responsible for an unexplained $31 million worth of input errors in the bank's accounting for res residual assets. Keystone claimed ownership of $44 million in trust accounts despite the fact that they were not their own assets. The two auditors uh, followed a basic audit plan that required them to obtain written information from CompuLink and Advanta that they were servicing the loans Keystone reported on the balance sheet. They also needed to verify the $98 million of interest income that was reported in 1998. A supervisor had declared Keystone as a maximum risk company, and despite this um, declaration, they still went about going the basic audit route, even though their own auditing manual demands that they um, do a comprehensive audit that requires a test of details to determine Keystone's reported income accuracy. Keystone had claimed that CompuLink and Advanta services their accounts, which was $227.2 million and $242.6 million, respectively, but the actual amount was $14 million and $6.3 million, respectively. Brangler had sought CompuLink 
both companies. CompuLink had verified the amount without explanation. In advance, it took, took long, but they finally confirmed that they serviced only $6.3 million. The remaining amount was tied to United National Bank, and Boinger assumed that this was that the uh, original amounts were correct without getting written statements, which also went against the audit manual. In conclusion, these glaring errors in judgment and the willing disregard to ignore the audit manuals prove they share near rock responsibility for keystone fraudulent activity. National Bank of Keystone is situated in West Virginia and was started in 1904 under the National Banking Act. Keystone Bank was a member of the National Banking Association within the Federal Reserve System. Keystone Bank quickly developed from a local community bank to a national bank worth over one billion assets within a short time period. The federal manager became suspicious over the bank's financial statement and launched a secret investigation on the bank's records to look for any form of misconduct or potential mistake. No wrongdoing was found in the Keystone Bank, and the bank continued driving and fraud for several years by risking a claim on assets belonging to another organization. Brent Dolan was the external auditor during the false period at the Keystone Bank. Ranthorn did not comply with the general accepted audience standards since they failed to establish any dishonesty activity in the Keystone Bank despite being a suspect of fraud. Ranthorn did not verify the accuracy of the figure as required by the GAAS. Instead, they relied on false financial information source from Keystone Bank. The bank manager had been filing an accuracy finance report about their bank financial condition, which made them a suspect to the federal bank inspector and official. The general accepted audience standards are a set of guidelines that audiences are required to use when conducting financial audit on financial records of various organizations. These guidelines require audiences to ensure consistency, accuracy and verify of their resource and action. GAAS was created by the Audience Standing Board of the American Institution of Certified Public Accountant. Grant Thorne Audience Firm failed to comply with GAAS by failing to ensure the accuracy of the financial record from Keystone Bank. It is evidence that Grant Thorne knew of the fraud and equity that has been happening at the Keystone Bank as it fell the basic compliance regulation of ensuring the accuracy of the financial records of their client. The audience firm did not test Keystone Bank in of the year income and failed to obtain any reasonable evidence within a given time frame. Action that contributed to the concealment of the false activity at Keystone Bank. Grant Thorne was unsafe and the official of the controller should act against contract who participate in unsound practice that cause major effects on bank. My name is Marquetta Vital and I will be talking about the losses occurred due to Grant Thorne audit. <clears throat> the audit that was conducted by Grant Thornton resulted in a payment of over $1 million in dividends being paid to shareholders. With the dividends being paid, it harmed the, the bank creditors and the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The FDIC went after Grant Thornton for losses incurred due to what they felt was professional malpractice because of the audit that was performed at Keystone from April 19th to September 1st. They could have started from October, but they felt the fraud would have not been found by then. So they didn't go after him starting from October. However, they felt since the fraud was not found by April 19th and that allowed the bank to be open another two days that they were able to go after him from the April 19th to September. And because of the bank was open those two days, they end up having extra expenses. So they felt that the, he was reliable, allowable for those expenses um, that happened when, when the bank were open for those two days.
Imagine, if you will, that you own a small business. Over the span of eight years, your business has saved $150,000 in an account at a local bank. One morning, you go to make a deposit, only to discover that the bank has been shut down. Bank customers won't have access to their funds until the bank's ownership has been transferred. Unfortunately, customers with balances over $100,000 will not be insured by the FDIC and will become creditors to the failed bank. Once the FDIC sells the failed bank's assets, they will be paid by the proceeds. Sadly, this process can take years. This scenario was a reality for 500 depositors of the First National Bank of Keystone. Due to the unsafe and unsound practices of the bank and its external auditor, Grant Thornton, these depositors incurred millions in losses. As my associates have discussed, our client, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, had inspected the First National Bank of Keystone and found their securities management and financial statements below standards and gave them a low rating. When the bank failed to make improvements, the OCC began the pr proceedings to take action against Keystone. To avoid punishment, Keystone and the OCC came to an agreement to have the bank independently audited by Grant Thornton. However, the external audit conducted by Grant Thornton was incompetent and negligent. The audit failed to comply with Grant Thornton's own auditing manual and the generally accepted auditing standards. First, the assigned auditors failed to assess, in Grant Thornton's own words, the maximum risk Keystone represented. They conducted, they conducted a basic audit with a test of reasonableness rather than a comprehensive audit that required a test of details, which would have allowed them to detect Keystone's fraud sooner. The audit was also based on fraudulent financial data one of the auditors obtained directly from Keystone. Second, the audit violated the generally accepted auditing standards by failing to assign more experienced personnel to the audit, providing more extensive supervision over the auditors, expanding the auditing procedures, independently obtaining financial data, and confirming all financial data through writing. Due to their incompetent audit, Grant Thornton was not able to detect any fraud in Keystone's financial records and released a report assuring that the bank's records were free of misstatements. This enabled Keystone to continue their fraudulent behavior until our client, the OCC, was able to shut them down after a further investigation proved that Keystone had in fact overstated their assets. Therefore, the key to determining Grant Thornton's liability for violating the federal law is its negligence when conducting the Keystone audit. If you believe that Grant Thornton failed to comply their own comply with their own auditing manual, failed to comply with the generally accepted auditing standards, and are directly responsible for the millions in incurred losses for 500 depositors, we ask that you deny Grant Thornton's claim to appeal the decision made by the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency.